Welcome back to Block TV, where it's time for Cryptonomics, a place and time where we examine the intersection of the traditional and digital asset economies. And, of course, what really affects all of it is the trade war. The trade war between the United States and China is making itself felt across financial markets, and among them, those of the digital asset market. According to a new report by Chain Chainalysis, pardon me, one of the projects that's reaping the benefits of the hostilities is none other than Tether. With more on that, I'm joined in studio, lucky, lucky girl that I am, by Ashi Wastrop Evans, uh, Block TV senior correspondent, to explain how and why. Okay, why is the trade war so good for Tether? Okay, so Tether has benefited from being in an incredibly unique position regarding its abilities within the entire trade war ecosystem. I'll break it down as follows. Well. So, Chain Analysis did this reporting that discovered that spot trading in cryptos in China. 99% of spot trading, spot trading into Bitcoin has occurred from Tether. That's saying most countries, you know, Korea, Japan, whatever, are still using fiat to access uh, Clearly, Bitcoin, yes. Right? That's the sort of right, classic right. mechanism. You have your fiat, you get it onto an exchange, you buy Bitcoin, you move forward. Not so the case in China. Why is that? Because China banned trading of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies like it within the country from the one. It's meaning that anyone who was attempting to do that faced potential crackdowns and fines right. from the Chinese government, a deep concern. Tether, Can however- Can everybody move to um, uh, Hong Kong back in the Well, time. yeah. Yes, okay. Uh, Ch <laughs> Tether, however, is excluded from that because the way people access Tether is using peer-to-peer over-the-counter trades, which is still technically, due to a, a loophole, a decision, and on purpose or otherwise, is still legal under Chinese law, meaning that a lot of companies and individuals who want to get into cryptocurrencies can use that Tether access point while still in China, get hold of Tether, and then kind of do what they want with it, and it's sort of outside the purview of the government. They're not using one, so they can get away with it. So partly thanks to this rising demand, Tether right. has now tripled its market capitalization since 2018, which is in and of itself pretty incredible. They're continuing to issue new uh, Tether tokens I'm all the time. I'm just smiling because I think this makes Joe Saz very upset. Uh, perhaps, perhaps. <laughs> but, I'm sure he has a lot to say in the matter. Yeah. Uh, but also, interestingly enough, Tether has now become the world's most used mm. cryptocurrency, despite it having a market capitalization only one thirty-eighth the size of Bitcoin. It's true, but because it has this curious adoption, mass right, adoption right. type it, of Look, remote. it's a fantastic way for those who want the security, stability, whatever, of the US dollar without actually having to work within US dollars, which as many people know is a very tricky field, right. often prone to sanctions and the, the oversight of the Treasury Department. The US has a uniquely powerful control over its own currency in terms of the way it's used worldwide. They have some incredible powers, the US government, to monitor the, and sanction the use of US dollars. So Tether provides that access point right. while simultaneously not having to fall under the purview of the US government. And it's leading to some pretty powerful uh, you know, interests taking place. And as we said, Tether growing massively. Massive. Also a little alarming given the fact we know of this $1.4 trillion lawsuit that's currently underway, uh, a class action lawsuit to take on Tether and its uh, parent companies, Bitfinex and Ifinex, a bit of a worry that can bring down a large section of the crypto markets, but uh, that's getting uh, exactly. a bit Exactly. I mean, this is, basically, it's, it's this type of, it's this point in time where Tether's doing so well, but it does need the trade war to continue, All right. in a way. Um, uh, and yeah, and it's not a long-term thing. But, but it suggests that, that that monetary policy sort of battle that's going on, that tug of war between the classic, you know, US dollar control of the global economy, People are starting to try and find ways to go around it. And despite China's best efforts to try and rein in what's happening inside their own country, people are still finding workarounds, people are still finding loopholes. And even for the Chinese government, which are pretty good when it comes to cracking down and regulating, having a hard time keeping up with keeping the rapid up with changes. That. Speaking of China, um, focusing on it um, uh, right now, it, we all know China has already announced it's going to be right. issuing a national um, uh, digital coin, most likely before anybody else. Um, uh, so the CBDC race, so to speak. Exactly. How is that affecting? So this is this is another very interesting element of the trade war and how it's playing out in money markets around the world. This has become a money monetary battle that's going on, a battle for monetary supremacy, for global monetary supremacy. Whereas the US dollar was for the last 70 odd years the un, you know, unchecked supreme leader of global uh, financial transactions, now 
that is being threatened by a whole slew of potential technological options. So obviously... No, entirely so. It makes one wonder also, um, and of course I cut you up in the middle, is mm -hmm. that the United States itself is not working on a digital coin right Yes, now. exactly. So, <laughs> so there is a yeah. number of countries, and obviously most importantly China, the world's second largest economy, going out there and saying they want that first mover advantage on a central bank digital currency, which could give them a whole lot of potential capabilities in terms of that global trade. People are getting sick and tired of the slowness and the immense oversight that comes with moving dollars around the world. And if you can get a Renimbi that's available in a digital form, you can ship around the world, much you can get access much Swift. faster, exactly, much faster than a Swift system, much faster even than inside the United States, the ACH system, which still takes days to process payments. If you are a it, company looking to rapidly move payments, particularly any digital related concerns, why not just use and the, it's the important to, And it's important to note also that when it comes to China, the population itself is already well versed right. with using exactly. digital money. So this is at the end of the day, I mean, you know, I think not too many people understand nobody uses paper almost anymore exactly. in Asia. And in that respect, um, uh, you know, he who controls the production, so to speak, controls the progress. It is. And, and the U.S. is so far behind in that sense, still so attached to their legacy systems, such as the ACH, which have to move Very physical true. money behind the scenes in a multi-day process. You know, when you transfer to a, an account, uh, to someone else's account, and it takes multiple days to go through. Anywhere between multiple days to a week to 10 right. days. That's outrageous yeah. in a modern system when, you know, I mean, there are workarounds. The U.S., you know, Venmo, obviously, is hugely popular in the United States. There are options that people use, but still for those larger scale transactions. That needless to say, if China is indeed issuing a digital coin right. by the, you know, somewhere around November, I believe, was the date that was floated as it's a rumor. It's been floated, right. rumored, but nothing can we, we can confirm. But exactly right, Yale. If I wanted to trade a barrel of oil uh, today and I want the money for it now, why am I not going to use the Chinese-backed digital currency and, uh, rather than waiting a week for my US dollars to come to Exactly. Me. Finally, zooming in, this trade war, um, uh, as we say, good for some, bad for others. What is it doing for the favorite boy of the sphere? Yes. That would be Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Look, it's an interesting one. And sort of zooming out here to look over the macro narrative, we've had this sort of ongoing discussion. Is Bitcoin the safe haven currency? Is it not? Now, I've mentioned this time immemorial, Yale, but it seems to be that there is some correlation in terms of there are safe haven uh, responses we can see. I mean, even in the last uh, big concern about the trade war happening a few weeks ago, I remember we spoke about the fact that it was matching gold. gold. It was ahead of gold, right. in fact, by about 24 hours, but was matching the One graphs on gold. One could see the correlation exactly. on the chart. But, you but know, then again, at the same time, that correlation when, when put out over time, you see time and time again analysts putting out that there isn't that sort of high level of correlation with gold yet to say it is definitive. But we did see that as the trade war has grown over 2019 and as it has rocketed, that as that narrative built, Bitcoin also did happen to build. Now, whether those factors are entirely related, it's a very difficult thing to right. say. But now, you know, in the last week, we've seen a potential easing of sort of first phase one deal that, uh, as President Trump calls it, uh, that's happening between the U.S. and China. Phase one, yes. Exactly. There was a dip in uh, Bitcoin of around one and a half, two percent around the time of that news. Now that deal seems to not be as good as everyone thinks. Uh, un perhaps unsurprisingly, yeah, it's um, a buy them or sell them Is news. there really a deal? Exactly. Yes. But there does seem to be some sort of correlation. It hasn't yet fully panned out. A lot of analysts say Bitcoin just isn't ready yet in terms of market saturation and even in terms of the technology itself. Uh, but certainly it's having impacts and this trade war is going to be a serious factor. Trade for all war is going to be a serious forward. factor and a story that we'll keep covering most likely also for the, um, uh, for the next coming year leading mm -hmm. up to those um, elections in the United States. Yes, um, Asha Westrop Evans, always, uh, as always, thank you for putting that into perspective, so to speak. That was Cryptonomics and we'll be right back. For more news and updates, follow us on Twitter.